With Custom Sensors, you can take your home assistant automations to another level. Custom Sensors let you integrate virtually anything into Home Assistant, even something as unconventional as a website. Don't believe me? I integrated my bank and budgeting information into Home Assistant, and now I can make automations with this information. And I can show you two ways that you can do this. Hey, do you see this? Yeah. That's a dashboard that monitors my finances within Home Assistant. As you know, dashboards need sensors in order to do what they do. So we need to create a sensor that captures our financial information. If you've seen my previous videos, you know that this dashboard is powered by Actual Budget, which is a free open source app used to track your finances. You can check that video out here or wherever, I don't know. Um, but that's what's being used to pass data to this dashboard. This video isn't gonna show you how to get that set up. It's just gonna show you what to do with the data once you have it. More importantly, it doesn't really matter how you get the data. It just matters what you do with it. That way you can use whatever system you want and make this work for you. I'm keeping this simple. I have four different dashboard tiles here. Uh, you can use and have whatever you want that makes sense to you, but I'll just show you it just how to get things going. And the most important and hard part about this is just getting the data inside as a sensor so you can create these particular tiles. I'm gonna make an assumption that you have some kind of API call that you can make to get data. And I'm gonna use this as an example. So I can call my local server at right here and it will give me out this dummy data. And here I can build a sensor based off of the data that comes from this API. This is how you do it. This is what you can use the native Home Assistant way to create a sensor that gives you the data that you're looking for. And what's cool about this is that you have different post and get commands, you can pass it payloads, and you can get the information back and parse it the way that you need so it can show up how you want. So in my case, I'm calling the particular API endpoint that I mentioned from before, I'm using a get command, and the value template is how I want the information to show up. So you reference it calling the value JSON. That's how you reference the payload coming in. This is the key that I'm looking at, the total spent, parsing it into an int, then I'm taking the absolute value of that, and then I'm dividing it by 100 because the particular API that I'm using doesn't give everything in decimals. It gives it as like whole numbers, so you have to divide it by 100. But you can do that here so it can come the way that you want, so this is great. And then of course you have this JSON attribute section, and this is this weird section here, let me show you. So yeah, that's this section here, this attribute section, where you have all of this additional data that you can use within your automations. So you would create this within your config.yaml file for Home Assistant. You're gonna restart the server and this information should show up. You can go to the developer tools and in under states, you can look for the name of your sensor that you created and the name will be here. So whatever you named it here, that's the same name that you can look for when you go inside the states under the developer tools. So current budget, and then you can see the number that got parsed out. This is the state. And then we have here the month, total income, total budgeted, total balance, and the friendly name. So all of this stuff gets pushed out here and that's it. You can use it for any data. It doesn't have to be for your banking data. If you have any other input that you can that you wanna parse into a sensor, this is how you can do it. There's another way to get data into Home Assistant without using Home Assistant, and that's using Node-RED. I know a lot of you don't really care for Node-RED, but this is actually pretty cool. You can create a sensor within Node-RED and Node-RED will share it with Home Assistant and Node-RED will update it and basically maintain that sensor for you. And because you're using Node-RED, you can do really powerful transformations to that data. When I type in sensor into the search section, you can see for Home Assistant, like there's this Home Assistant section and you have binary sensor and this regular sensor. This is the one that I'm using. You can see this over here, I created two, the one for the burn down rate and one for the percent of budget left. If we go back to Home Assistant, we can see that we have the burn rate and then budget remaining and then spending per day. All of this stuff is being maintained by Node-RED. Now here's how this works. 
I need to first get the data. So I'm going to call that dummy API that I mentioned from earlier within this HTTP request. This node right here simply starts the whole process, but instead of me manually starting it, it also lets me time it. So it says once every 12 hours, this will just kick off. Here in this function node, I'm just doing a few things for the API. So the API needs to know, let's say like dates and, and like what time frame and blah, blah, blah. I'm just doing that here. This is unimportant to be honest. What's the important part is, is just this section here. This is the HTTP request, and this is just calling some dummy endpoints. So I'm calling uh, this get transactions, and I'm also calling uh, this get budget. So both of these are gonna kick off. They're gonna transform the payload into JSON because it comes back as a string. And then I'm doing some transformations here. I'll just look at this budget one. So for this budget one, I'm just looking at the payload. I'm grabbing the total income, the total spend, the total balance, and I'm writing it all out. So I'm recreating this payload. And in this payload, I'm basically recreating this total balance because this comes back as like whole numbers. I need to create it into decimals. So I divide it by 100 for the things that I care about. So total balance, total income, total spend. And now that it's a payload, it gets sent back. This join node combines it into a single payload. So it waits for both of these to be finished. And then this last function here looks complicated. This is to show you the fact that you can do complex calculations calculations and manipulations to the data, depending on your use case. So in this case, I want to find, I got the percent left. I want to get the average spent per day. I want to understand the max that I'm spending per day. This is the amount remaining. And because of all of this stuff that I'm calculating, I can calculate the burn rate percentage and the max amount that I'm spending per day. And I'm sending all of this information out. The point of me showing all of this is that you can use Node-RED to create whatever you want. You can make it as complex or as simple as you want it to be. I have here a bunch of different transformations to calculate very niche things that I would like to look at. Um, and you don't have to do that. You could just use the simple Home Assistant version, or if you're into Node-RED, you can use that version, but you have options. Lastly, it goes into the sensor nodes. So if we take a look at, let's say the burn down rate one, it takes in the payload and that payload is basic, has the state. So it has the state of what we're looking for. So let's say some number. And then it also, is, I have here additional attributes. So the burn rate percentage, the max spending per day, and I'm looking at that JSON object that I passed in and just assigning those values to these keys. You can see what this means here. So let's look at, let's say this burn rate percentage, burn rate, and you see that it's a percentage. If we were to look at the YAML file for this, or if we were to take a deeper dive into the YAML, the burn rate percentage, there you go. So here, so you have the burn rate percent. If we go back to node red, burn rate percent, it converts this into that underscored snake case burn rate percent. And this is the value that gets passed into it. Same thing for max spending per day. If we look at the budget per day, you see here, max spending per day. And this is from the burn down rate. Of course, you have the regular things that you can do with Home Assistant tiles and dashboards. So I have a shortcut here that if I click on the budget remaining, it'll just open up the app. So it'll jump straight into the actual budget app. So you can go further and inspect what you're looking for. And this works pretty great. See, that's not so bad, it's not so bad. So now you know two things or three things. First, you now know how to get data from wherever you want, any API endpoint and create a sensor out of it. You also know how to create that sensor within Node-RED. You can do the same things, you can do transformations or whatever you wanna do. Lastly, you now know you can take Node-RED information and create sensors from it that Node-RED will maintain. The cool part is now that you have this within Home Assistant, you can create automations based off of how numbers rise and fall do whatever you want get crazy with it and if you really want to go crazy and you're into node red why don't you try combining it with ai using this